Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar today. This is the IIA's CIA exam preparation webinar entitled Increase Your Chances of Passing the CIA Exam. We're happy to have you with us today. My name is Marie Lilly with the IIA, and I'll be your host for today's session. If you have any technical issues during the start of today's program, please click on the Q&A widget. You'll see that at the bottom of your screen. And that will take you to our uh, inbox where we have a technical advisor on hand to answer any of your technical questions. If you see that your screen freezes, sometimes that does happen, just click on the F5 button on your Mac, uh, sorry, on your PC, or the refresh keys on your Mac. That usually does the trick. That usually refreshes the console. If you still have issues, just use that Q&A button and uh, we'll be happy to help behind the scenes. We uh, have an hours program today. We're going to take questions at the end. You can also use that Q&A feature to submit any content questions for our speakers today. So let me introduce our speakers. We have Jonathan Jones. He is manager of IIA Global Certification Administration for the IIA. We also have Vicki McIntyre. She is president, first plus resolution, and past chair of the IIA Chapter Relations Committee of North America. And she's a member of the IIA North American Board of Directors and is a CIA Learning Systems Instructor. We also have with us today Kelly Quinn. Kelly is vice president of IIA Strategic Partnership, and that's the IIA CIA learning system. So those are our speakers today. Also, what we're going to cover today will include the Certified Internal Auditor Certification Program, the CIA Exam Overview, Exam Preparation, the new CIA's, IIA's CIA Learning System. That's brand new, so we'll be talking about that. They will also cover study tips and test taking tips provide you with some links and resources, and as I mentioned, we'll take questions at the end. So without further ado, let me turn the program over to Jonathan. Thank you, Marie, and uh, good day to everybody. Hope everything is, is going well on your side of, of the world or wherever you may be, and uh, we're really happy that you're able to join us today. Um, we're going to just give you some quick pointers and, and some information um, about the CIA. Um, I know that's why a lot of you are here now. Um, so hopefully by the end of this, maybe we'll be able to answer some questions that you needed answered or um, give you some good starting points for, um, for taking and passing the exam. So we'll start with uh, just a basic overview of the CIA. So for some of you who are, you know, aware of the IIA and, and some of what we do, um, then this may not be new to you, but, you know, for uh, others, this is maybe your first certification or you just kind of happen to wander into the field of internal auditing. Um, we want to give you some basic information about the CIA. Um, so it's very global. I mean, you'll be able to tell by um, some of the attendees that are here joined from all over the world. Is, um, We've got 165,000 who are currently certified, um, and it is the only globally recognized certification. Um, and uh, what's really cool is um, as internal audit becomes more and more of a necessity when it comes to business models, um, as well as government, um, the IIA is, is really primed in position to make the CIA um, the primary certification for that. So. Um, this isn't only just, you know, a personal accomplishment, but this is also something that businesses and companies are beginning to look for. I um, mean, the uh, CIA is based on the International um, Professional Practices Framework, which is commonly referred to, and you'll see it in all of our study materials, as the IPPF. And if we take a look at the map, we can see some of the disbursement of CIAs. Of course, in North America, there's a high count, but you'll see that some of the other countries, there's uh, you know almost just as high, or, or if not a higher number, um, specifically in Asia, um, even uh, in South America. 
So just all, all over the world, and we've got more and more that are joining um, in tons of candidates that are uh, in the pipeline currently to earn their CIA. And here we just highlight some of the benefits. Um, of course, we talked about the credibility. Um, some of you may be performing internal audits. Some may be performing external audits. And believe it or not, a lot of companies do prefer candidates who have earned the CIA, even when performing, uh, even when performing external audits. So um, the the framework and the knowledge that you gain, it does transition back and forth between the internal audit and the external um, audit. So it's it's pretty it's pretty nice to be balanced because you never know where your career could take you. So no matter where you go, you know that you've got a strong knowledge base that's recognized globally as well. When we did a poll with um, CAEs who in most organizations are the ones responsible, you know, for hiring or at least putting together the teams and assigning the hiring managers, um, we talked to them about what was important and what they looked for um, when filling those roles in those positions. Um, and we had an overwhelming response. I um, mean, 84%, you know, agreed that the CIA definitely adds value. Um, 70% said that they prefer to hire CIAs. And so that's just, you know, getting your foot in the door and getting the opportunity. But once you're there, or maybe, you know, you already have a job, now you look and you see that by earning the CIA, you're going to uh, have a, uh, even more of a potential um, earning, uh, uh, your uh, earning range increases. So um, it really is just all the way around. It, it just kind of gives you that extra push that moves you to the next phase of your career, whether or not it's to stay in internal audit or maybe it's to aspire to be a CAE, uh, maybe be an audit manager. It really just set a solid foundation, not only lets the employer know that you're serious, um, but it also helps to increase that earning potential, which is what you're going to need in order to continue to move forward. So uh, definitely you came to the right place. And I believe we have a polling question coming up, and I will turn it over to Marie. Thank you so much. Yes, we do. We have our first polling question, and we'd like to know, when are you planning to take a CIA exam card? Your options are within the next six months, within the next 12 months, or you haven't decided yet. Please go ahead and select the answer that best represents your thinking, and we'll give it a little bit of time so you can get those answers in there. Make sure everybody gets their response in. Just make your selection and click on the Submit button. And again, if you are having any kind of audio or video issues, please uh, use your QA widget at the bottom of your screen, and our technical advisor will help you manage through that. Sometimes, again, it helps to refresh uh, if you have a, a screen that's kind of stuck. That happens sometimes with the bandwidth that we all have at home now is maybe less than we're used to having in our offices. Okay, those responses are coming in nicely. We appreciate that. I'll give you a little bit more time. Make sure you get those in. That will be very helpful for our speakers to know what your, your thinking is on this. All right. About five or six more seconds, then I'm going to close up the poll and see what people have to say. Okay, thank you all so much. I'm going to close the poll now, and I'm going to display those results. And, Jonathan, I'll turn it back to you. Awesome. So looking at the results, it seems like an overwhelming amount of you are really ready to kind of jump in there and uh, uh, get ready to start taking the exam parts within the next six months. That's really great to see. Awesome. Awesome. So hopefully today we'll be able to give you some pointers, and uh, again, it'll kind of help you to, to get started off with the passing score on that first exam. So very glad to see that. 
So here's just a basic overview of the certification process. Um, we try to make it as you know, simplistic as we can. Um, the first step is to apply into the program, of course. Um, there is supporting documentation um, that's needed, and we'll cover that in just a second, uh, to become approved into the program. Um, the next step, once you are approved into the program, is to register and to test. Um, once you do register, you have uh, up to 180 days to take that exam part. You know, I've seen some people, they take, just register for all three exams at once. And then I've seen others, they kind of take more of a steady, uh, balanced approach where maybe they study for one, space it out, then the next. Um, and a reminder, you have up to you know three years to complete the entire program. Um, but definitely you want to find the flow that works best for you when it comes to testing. I mean, then the last step, which I think is the easiest, is uh, verifying your experience. And that's how you actually become certified once you pass all of the exam parts. Um, so uh, many of you probably already have the requisite amount of experience that's needed. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit, uh, a couple of slides, uh, the level of experience that's needed. But again, once you verify your experience, then you earn the CIA certification. So these are the required supporting documents to become approved into the program before you test and, and start those steps. Uh, the first is government-issued photo ID. Uh, the second is uh, educational diploma or transcript. And the third is a character reference. Um, the cool thing about a character reference is it is all electronic, um, so it's pretty easy. You go into your um, CCMS or Candidate Management System record, um, and once you apply into the program, then it guides you directly through all of the steps. So as you're going through your application, you're going to see fields where you are able to upload your photo ID directly into your application. Same for your uh, evidence of education. In your character reference, uh, it's a simple form. Um, you type in who you would like to be your reference, and it sends them an automated uh, message, and they're able to verify, like, hey, yep, you know, this person's a good character, known them for a long time, all of that. And as soon as they approve that character reference, uh, it's automated, goes right back to the system, and you're all set, and you're ready to test. So uh, it's really kind of a quick process, and, and that way you can get on to the uh, to the important things, which is studying the past the exam. So the exam themselves, uh, it is a three-part exam. You can take them in any order. Some people, you know, default to part one. Um, however, when you're looking at the syllabus, and we do encourage you to review the syllabus, um, however you decide that you want to attack this thing, it's up to you. So you can start with part three, part two, part one, whatever order you want to take it, you're able to do that. Um, the scoring is scaled, uh, 250 being in the bottom, 750 being the top, 600 is what is required to pass. So here is a breakdown of the way that the exam questions are laid out. So part one is the largest exam, which is why you have the most time to pass. Uh, part two and part three, each you're given two hours and they both consist of 100 questions. Um, so again, it does depend on you know what you feel more comfortable with. Um, as far as content goes, but you can take these in any order. And when we're speaking about content, uh, this is what we mean. Uh, the exam syllabi gives you uh, a breakdown of what you can expect to see, you know, the most of, as well as topics on each exam. So for part one, you see that you have the most domains here. There's a total of six and that accounts for the additional time that you get. Um, when you're looking at the percentage breakdown of governance, risk management, and control, I mean, that, that really just screams the IPPF, which is why it's going to be mentioned so much, again, in the, not only the syllabus, but your study materials, um, as well as on the IIA website. 
Um, you have access to those at any time. So if you wanted to get started in, in reviewing those, um, just head to the IAA website and under standards and guidance, you'll see a big old link for uh, the IPPF, and it's available in a variety of languages as well. Uh, parts two and parts three, you'll see they're a little bit more balanced, um, a little bit more condensed, obviously, with less questions. Um, but, you know, some people say that these could be a little bit tougher than part one because of the content. Um, I know part three for sure. I'm excited about part three. Um, it was revamped, and it made it a, a bit more modern, especially where we are now with so much virtual, you know, meetings, businesses are operating, some are 100% virtual. I haven't been in my office in, you know, a year and some change, and I'm sure many of you are the same. Um, so that IT component and the security component is really going to play a part in that. Um, so, you know, the, the more that, that we continue and wherever this journey is taking us, we know the technology is going to play a much larger role. And part three really does focus on that. So it's not only preparing you for internal audit, but preparing you for other fields that you may potentially branch into. And here is an example of the, uh, of the uh, updated syllabi again. Um, I think before uh, there was a slide that showed you the older domains um, so part three really had a, a lot more information and it also did not have that IT component. Um, but this screenshot here is just kind of going over the information that we uh, already discussed about it being more condensed. And then there is a, another poll question, I believe, that is coming up and I'll turn back over to Marie. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Yes, we have our second poll question today. And we would like to ask, have you already applied for the CIA certification program? And your response is yes or no. So please go ahead and um, tell us whether or not you have applied. We'll give you some time to be able to answer that poll question. And we'll keep that up for about uh, 20 or 30 seconds or so. Thank you. Those responses are coming in very nicely. We appreciate that. And again, this is uh, great information for our speakers to have to be able to continue to provide you with the information you need. So about 15 more seconds or so. Okay, very good. Thank you all very much. A couple more seconds, and I'm going to close up the poll and then display those results. Okay, thank you so much. I am going to display those results now, and I'm going to turn it back to Jonathan. Thank you, Marie. So looking at the results, this is pretty split. Um, so some of you already have applied uh, for the program. Maybe you're currently in the program. Um, and then others, it looks like you have not. So um, hopefully, again, by the time you're done with this, it'll give you um, any answer any questions that maybe you had or, or give you a little bit more information about the certification programs. So just a couple uh, more things before I uh, turn it over. So. Online proctoring is something that we made available. Um, at first, it was as a result of the, you know, the pandemic. Um, we didn't want a, a lot of candidates to be faced with a situation where it's, hey, you know, my, my time's running out, or maybe I had studied for this exam, but now the testing centers are all closed down because we're on a lockdown. Um, in some countries, it is a very severe or very strict lockdown, whereas you can't really go anywhere except to the grocery store. There's curfews. So uh, what we wanted to do, um, having that in mind, was allow candidates to be able to test um, pretty much from their home. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. There are, you know, a couple of requirements. Um, if you head over to our website, we have a whole section on online proctoring. Um, there's just a basic, you know, um, 
machine requirements that you need, but it allows you to continue your certification journey. And for some people, uh, you know, maybe you have more time than before. You know, maybe now it's, you know, have a couple hours commute, so now you can spend more time studying, or whatever the case may be. Um, you have more control over your testing schedule and how quickly you're able to progress through the program. So that is available for both the CIA and then also the CRMA, which is our uh, uh, certification in risk management. So uh, for both of those certification programs, you're able to take the online test. So that's something that we're really proud of and we're really happy to see um, that it has continued. So even as we get you know, the pandemic under control, um, it looks like that that's something that we'll be able to continue. So that's great news. Um, the second to last thing is maintaining your certification. Once you become certified, you are required to earn um, CPE credits or continuing your education each year. That's just to make sure that you're abreast of all the changes in the profession. Um, and again, make sure you know you're, you're still competent. And to be competent, you have to um, uh, show that you're continuing to learn and educate yourself with all the, the new principles and, and new strategies, um, as well as the, uh, the new foundations of internal auditing. Um, so each year you're required to earn 40 hours of CPE if you are practicing. Um, if you are non-practicing, meaning you're not practicing any internal audit functions, um, that would also include, you know, like compliance or risk assessment, um, quality assurance, things like that. If you're non-practicing, there's only 20 hours of CPE that's needed every year. Um, the best part is once you earn the certification, we give you, um, basically it's a CPE waiver. So the year that you earn the certification, and then that following year, your CPEs, we provide you with those hours. So you're not required to report until after that second year, and then that's when you would need to earn these each year. And lastly, for uh, a lot of the information that I went over, um, as well as a step-by-step -step walkthrough for what you need in order to get approved into the program, um, uh, any questions about taking the exams, um, questions about um, going to a test center, perhaps, you know, you need to go to a test center, maybe online testing is not available in your area. Um, pretty much anything having to do with the certification, you can download the certification candidate handbook. Um, it's available on the website. Um, and again, that's available in different languages as well. So that's a step-by-step -step walkthrough, kind of be your guide as you guys continue through the certification journey. And with that, I will turn it over to Vicki. She's going to talk about exam prep. Well, hello, everybody. I'm really excited to be with you today, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm going to go through some exam preparation uh, information and tips and tricks for actually studying and taking your exam. Um, I have taught CIA exam prep uh, literally to thousands of people around the globe and helped them be successful in earning their certification. So hopefully my experience will be helpful to you in being successful on earning your CIA certification. I'm very excited about the IIA's CIA Learning System version 7. This has been an evolution over the course of about 13 or 14 years, and this version of the learning system is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was introduced and rolled out in November. It allows you to follow an individualized, customized study plan so that you can prioritize the content that you need to work on um, after you've assessed and identified your personal knowledge gaps. So you'll go through a process of taking a pretest, identifying your gaps, and then you can customize your learning experience for your specific needs, or you can follow the full scope of the exam syllabus content 
and uh, study every single element that's included in the exam syllabus. The structure of the system is organized around micro-learning sessions, so there are smaller content segments, and they include estimated study times. So this allows you to really efficiently form your study and your study plan, where you can take little bite-sized study modules you know, if you have five minutes before a meeting and you want to work on a topic, that's awesome. You can capitalize on having that time availability. Or if you want to set up your study plan where you're studying for an hour or two, um, three or four times a week in the evenings, whatever works for you. The structure of the learning system is also very convenient. It's designed for your mobile devices, so you can access your materials wherever you are 24-7. Um, you just log in and you pick up right where you left off from your last uh, study touch point with the content. Um, IIA members can also click on links in the uh, online study tools and go directly to supplemental and recommended guidance that augments the CIA learning system. So overall, the IIA CIA learning system follows the International Professional Practices Framework and the CIA exam syllabus and allows you to understand and learn and apply the content. In terms of your study approach, many CIA candidates prefer to study on their own but not everybody stays focused. It's very easy to procrastinate. And I can tell you that in my experience with students that I've had over the years, the number one reason that people are not successful in earning their CIA certification is failure to follow a disciplined, systematic approach to their study and procrastinating, putting it off, allowing other things to get in the way of your study. So if you prefer more of a structured approach, you might want to consider an instructor-led course. They are offered by the IIA. For example, the IIA, if you go on to the IIA.org and then click on that Learning and Events tab at the top of the home page, and then drop down and click on CIA exam prep, you're gonna see that there are many, many course offerings in the virtual space. Um, for example, one of them starts uh, in just about a week. There's a part one course that's going to be held from February 17th through the 22nd. Um, and then they go on from there. There's many offerings for you. So just know that that's available to you if you want a virtual instructor led course for larger audit shops, there is also the opportunity for um, individual audit activities to have specific instructor-led courses on site if you're moving back into the workplace and, and a live classroom environment might work for you. Um, and then, of course, colleges and universities all over North America and internationally offer not for credit as well as for university credit uh, CIA exam prep courses. So there are many options for your learning. Marie, you wanna launch the poll for us, please? Thank you so much, Vicki. Yes, here is a poll question for folks. This one's got a few more options. And we'd like to know how you like to study. Do you like to study on your own via a self-study program, in a classroom, in-person instructor-led course, in an online classroom with online instructor-led course, or some other way? Please go ahead and make your selection for us and click on the Submit button. We'd be very interested to see how you like to study. So we'll give a little bit of time, make sure everybody gets their options in and select the one that best represents how you like to study. Here, thank you so much. Those are coming in nicely. I'll give it a little bit more time. 
make sure we're able to hear from all of you. All right, about five more seconds, and then I'm going to close that poll and display the results. All right, thank you so much. Vicki, I'm displaying the results and I'm turning it back to you. Thank you, Marie. Well, this is interesting. About 60% of you prefer to study on your own, 25% uh, in a live classroom, and about 14% uh, in person, I guess. So, um, I'm sorry, 25% in the online classroom. So the IIA and various universities have a lot of options for you there. Studying on your own is certainly uh, a good approach as well if you can stay focused. I would just say you want to follow a systematic, disciplined approach to studying. If you decide to pursue your CIA certification, don't take this commitment lightly. This is uh, an investment in yourself. It's an investment in your career path. And earning your CIA certification is going to benefit you for the rest of your career, even if you don't stay in internal audit. If you move into some other type of assurance role, such as a risk management role or a compliance role, getting this foundational understanding of the professional practices framework and the IIA standards, internal audit methodology, and everything that goes into earning this certification is going to going to really serve you well for the rest of your career. Recognize that your CIA certification and passing your exams requires time, it requires dedication, and it requires work. So get your head in the game before you start. Uh, here on the slide, we show a three-step process to be successful on your exams. First is to assess where you are today. Understand your baseline. Where are you today? Understand what are the gaps in your knowledge. So we have an online pretest in the CIA learning system that allows you to identify your strengths and weaknesses and to form your study path, to form your study plan. And this is critical to your success. So by doing this online pretest, it's a 50 multiple choice question quiz, and this is going to give you a very good picture of where you're starting. After you complete this pretest, you'll get a summary of the results by topic, and you can go back and review the questions and the rationales for the answers. The second step then is to study. So choose your study path. The pretest results is going to determine your recommended study path. It'll allow you to prioritize the topics that need the most work. You can also choose to study the order of the CIA exam syllabus and the printed books, the printed uh, textbooks. So whether you want to focus on those areas that you identify from your gap analysis, where you're not as strong in understanding the content and the application of the IIA standards and guidance. Um, you might want to just focus on those areas. But many CIA exam candidates will follow the exam syllabus exactly just as a refresher to circle back and revisit those topics that may be um, they're, they're not as familiar with, or maybe, maybe you work for an audit activity that doesn't exactly follow IIA standards and guidance. I find that a lot of my um, public sector auditors, a lot of uh, government auditors might follow a, a blend of yellow book and red book standards. So sometimes it's good to follow the entire syllabus to prepare for your exam. In terms of reading the curriculum and the materials, you will also want to uh, either download everything, all of the curriculum to your e-reader or what other, whatever device you use. 
Um, or you can uh, get the printed books if you prefer to study that way. Um, the reading materials will give you estimated study times for each of the topics in the exam syllabus. So I think, um, you know, a lot of people prefer to have the printed materials um, so that they can highlight and underline and make notes in the margins. Many of you are, are quite capable of doing that on your e-reader. So it just depends on, you know, your, your preferred uh, uh, delivery channel, I guess. Again, the topics are presented in these small micro-learning segments. So it really helps you to study efficiently. And this has been a vast improvement of the learning system evolution over the various generations of the learning system. That's one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited about this version 7. As you're studying, you can click on the links within the reading materials and go directly to the IIA guidance and other resources. So that's a fabulous feature about version 7. If you're not sure of a topic after you've read the curriculum, again, then you can link directly to these additional resources for reinforcement or for further clarification of the topics that you are studying. Um, to this point, it's very beneficial to be an IIA member. Uh, the reason for that is that the exam fee reductions will more than offset your membership dues. In other words, if you are not an IIA member, your exam fees will be higher than the fee for IIA members. So the point being that by becoming an IIA member, um, your investment in your IIA membership will more than offset, will be more than offset by the reductions in the exam fees as you're moving through the three parts of the CIA exam. The other great thing about being an IIA member is that this is going to give you access to that additional supplemental guidance on the IIA's website that is reserved exclusively for IIA members. So you'll have that opportunity to get a deeper dive, a much deeper dive. Quizzes. Another element of your study then is to do your quizzes. You will apply what you've learned and be able to test your comprehension. So after you've completed several of the reading topics, you'll do an online quiz. All of the questions are multiple choice, just like you will see on your actual CIA exam. Um, four possible options. You choose the best answer, and then when you click OK, you will see the correct answer highlighted in green if, it, if you've chosen the correct answer, and a rationale for why it is the best answer. If you have been unsuccessful in answering uh, that question, it will pop up in red. And again, you'll still have the rationales for why your um, answer choice was not the best answer. After each quiz question, you'll get feedback. So uh, you'll also get a reference to where you can find more information in the reading materials. So it'll give you a direct uh, reference right to chapter and verse and the information that you need to read to reinforce your learning on the topic. Step three then is practice. The CIA practice exam uh, gives you a timed practice exam that is exactly like the CIA exam experience that you will have in the Pearson View um, uh, proctored exam experience. So it is timed. It allows you to flag questions and then review them uh, once you've gone all the way through your exam questions to circle back and uh, review any that you were unsure of. So after you have submitted the exam and you've received your score, then you can go back and review the questions that you were unsure of. 
Part one exam is two and a half hours. Jonathan covered this earlier. And likewise, the CIA practice exam will be two and a half hours for part one, and then two hours for parts two and three. The time remaining for you to complete all of your exam questions is shown in the upper right-hand corner of the um, exam um, when you're doing your practice exam. So you'll be able to flag those questions that you want to go back to, which is a tremendous feature of the learning system. We often get the question, how much time should I expect? to invest in my studying. Um, the authors of the learning system recommend 40 hours approximately for part one and 40 hours for part two and 50 hours or more for part three. Um, I can tell you that my personal exam experience, uh, I, I studied for parts one and two together, parts one and two correlate very nicely. Part one is all about the attribute standards, the content that Jonathan went through earlier, where we're talking about independence and objectivity, the requirement to have a charter, your proficiency and due professional care, quality assurance and improvement program, and fundamentals of governance, risk, and control. And then part two is much about internal audit methodology. So it's the performance standards where we're going through risk assessment and deriving an annual risk-based audit plan, uh, planning the work at the engagement level, and then performing the work and doing the test work and qualities of audit evidence, and then reporting on the, re on the work, communicating the results of the work, and then monitoring. So parts one and two are all about what we do every day, day in and day out as internal auditors. Part three is very different. It's the business acumen, it's information security, it's fundamentals of IT, and then financial management. So part three tends to give people the toughest challenge. Um, for my part one and two, I studied about 50 hours for both parts together, and I took them on the same day. I took part one in the morning and part two in the afternoon. And I, um, I was successful on my first attempt. Um, when I took the exams, I was already a CPA, and I'd had a lot of internal audit and risk management experience. So I think that I was very well positioned to be successful. My part three exam, I was very intimidated by the IT content and the IT security information. Um, I'm a baby boomer, and I wasn't born with a mobile phone in my hand, so I was a little intimidated by the IT content in the exam syllabus, uh, but I did study. I'd say that I studied more like 60 or 70 hours uh, for my part three exam, um, and I was successful on my first attempt, but it did require more of my time and, uh, you know, m more of my uh, repetitive study of the topics that I was less familiar with. So your study time is going to be determined by several things. Do you work for an audit activity that follows the professional practices framework, internal audit methodology as promulgated by the IIA? Do you, uh, have you recently finished school? Are you used to studying, used to taking tests? How many years have you had in internal audit? Um, your expertise in the accounting and financial management topics. Can you understand the fundamentals of how to read a financial statement, for example? Do you understand fundamentals of IT risk and control? Um, how quickly you can read and understand the, uh, the syllabus uh, topics. So it depends on a number of, of factors. I had one student, um, he actually, let's see, my client was the U.S. Postal Service, and this guy was right out of his MBA program, and he chose to take his Part 3 exam first, and he passed his Part 3 on his first attempt with very little study. 
because he was used to studying, was he was used to taking tests, he was right out of his MBA program. Um, I've had other auditors in class who have a lot of years of experience and they breeze right through parts one and two. And then when they get to part three, because it's been a, quite a long time since they've been in school, it requires quite a bit more effort and quite a bit more focus and reiteration of those syllabus topics. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's largely dependent on your life, your education, your work experience, um, and whether or not you work, have worked in an audit environment that follows the Red Book. So let's talk about some study tips and some test taking tips. Now that you know about uh, CIA certification and the process, and by the way, I just want to reiterate the importance of downloading that certification handbook. That really is going to be helpful to you in navigating the certification process and all of the elements that are required to ultimately earn your certification. Um, as Jonathan explained, taking your exams is just one piece of uh, earning your CIA certification. So definitely download that certification handbook. So now that you know about the CIA certification and the benefits to earning it, um, and we have a great study strategy here with the IIA's CIA learning system, let's talk about studying. So you want to choose the right study method for your learning style. Many of you said that you prefer to uh, study on your own. That's great. So, you know, one of, the, one of the critical things here is to really be disciplined about your studying and your preparation. Um, I recommend setting your exam date. So once your application has been approved, do that pretest for whatever part you're going to do first. So I, Jonathan said earlier, you can take the exams in any order. So do the pretest and come up with a realistic timeline for your study. Are you going to study six hours a week over eight weeks? You know, what does that look like for you? Once you have established your study strategy and your timeline, commit. Set your exam date. Pick your date and time. Pay your exam fee. Now you have a target. Now you know when your final exam is going to be. Treat this like a self-study college course, and your CIA exam is your final. Okay? So lock in your exam date. Now you have your target. Recognize that you cannot cram for these tests. So you've got to be realistic. Don't procrastinate. Set your study plan. Calendar your study time. Honor your study appointments. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Write your flashcards. Flashcards uh, over and over and over again. I hear from my students that using the flashcards that are found in the resources tab of the CIA learning system is a tremendous study tool. So take those flashcards, understand the concepts, you know, the vocabulary words, but augment the flashcards. Whether you're using an electronic device or you're using hard copy flashcards to study from, supplement those flashcards with what you remember from your studying and from reading the topic. The test is designed around the proficiency topics or basic topics. It's going to require more time and more effort to really learn the proficiency topics. So other study tips, read the International Professional Practices Framework. Be sure that you understand the standards. Be sure that you understand the uh, application of the standards. Um, write an audit manual using the standards as a baseline. On this bullet point, I would say at a minimum, write a table of contents for an audit manual. This is going to get you into the framework and the structure of the standards and guidance. So if you write that table of contents and you've left something out, then that might be a topic that you need to circle back and study a little more. 
think about perhaps having a new job where you're working for a large company with a larger audit shop, perhaps a publicly traded organization where you have a chief audit executive that reports directly to an audit committee of the board. You have various staff levels. Um, so think about that context. And by the way, uh, when you are taking your exam, you want to think very, very broadly. Don't think in the don't think in terms of the narrow scope of your work experience or your industry or your geography where you live and work. Recognize that this is a global certification. The same exam is given in something like 180 countries around the world. So you need to think very broadly and think globally and choose the answer that is going to have the broadest applicability. Another tip, read the last sentence of the question before all the details. If you come ac across one of those questions that has a couple of paragraphs of long, verbose um, dialogue, uh, go straight to the question first so that you know what question you're going to be answering. Anticipate your answer. So anticipate what you think the answer is before you read the answer choices. Um, then go back and read the detail if necessary. Um, trust your first impressions. Don't get into analysis paralysis where you are burning time um, analyzing the question uh, if you're not sure of the answer, pick an answer, flag the answer. Um, you'll be able to circle back and review it later if you're if you're you know following good time management uh, strategies. I recommend as you are working through the quizzes in the IIA's CIA learning system, you'll want to keep your keep your phone near you and monitor your time. You should be you should be tracking about one minute per question. And developing this time management discipline as you're working through your quizzes and you're studying, this is going to help you to establish that rhythm so that you're going to have a buffer of time at the end of your exam to circle back and review any of those questions that you flagged that you were unsure of. Very often, You'll be working through your exam questions. You're not sure of an answer. You'll flag that question. And then something else in a future question as you're working through, something will trigger something in your mind and in your, you know, your data bank that's going to enable you to better answer that question that you saw previously that you flagged. So flagging the questions is a very good, uh, a very good strategy, provided you're practicing your good time management skills so that you do have a buffer of time at the end of your exam. So if you just do the math, you have uh, um, 150 multiple choice questions for your part one exam. So 150 minutes is, uh, what is that, two hours and, and uh, two hours and, and uh, what is 150 minutes? I'm, I'm having a brain fade here. <laughs> anyway, the bottom line is, um, as you're working through your questions, you'll be able to uh, use one minute per question, and you'll have a buffer of time left over at the end to revisit those that you flagged. Don't rush. Be well rested. Make sure you eat a good meal. Be comfortable for your exam. And I think that's about it. I'm going to turn it over to Kelly now. Kelly can talk to you about how to get the IIA's CIA learning system. Great. Well, thank you so much, Vicki, for sharing all of those very helpful exam preparation tips. And also, thanks to Jonathan for covering the important information about the CIA certification. So, um, as a thank you for attending the webinar today, we would like to offer you a special 20% discount on the learning system materials. So you can go to learncia.com and if you click on order now and go through the checkout process, 
at the end of the checkout, you can apply the discount code CIA221 at the checkout, and you will receive 20% off of your learning system materials. So that does apply to the full kit and individual parts. It also um, applies on top of your membership discount. So if you're an IA member, you get it even a, a higher savings than that. I also just wanted to mention, if you have an audit group and you have five or more people who may be interested in studying for the exam this year, I encourage you to reach out to my colleague, Mike Downs. Uh, his email is mike.downs at bi.org. And he has a program set up for corporations where he, you could, your corporate group, if you have five or more people, can receive 20% out throughout the year. So please feel free to reach out to Mike for additional information. This 20% discount is going to be valid until March 15th. So you'll have until that time to receive the discount. I also just wanted to share a couple important links. The first is a certification website on thei.org. That's where you're going to find the candidate handbook, which Jonathan mentioned, which includes all sorts of information about the CA exam, the eligibility requirements, the fees, the process, applying, every, basically everything you need to know about the certification. Um, at the eyes.org website on CIE, you'll also be able to access the candidate management system, and that's where you go to apply and register for the exam and upload your documentation. Also, learn CI.com is the main website for the study materials, the learning system. So that's where you'll be able to order at that 20% discount. We have free practice exam questions there, free test taking tips, a free demo, the benefits and some testimonials. And if you're interested in taking an instructor-led course, we have a list of all of them around the world there, both online and live course options. So if you Go to LearnCI.com and click on Courses Offered, and you're interested in taking an instructor-led course, that's where you'll find that information. All right, now the fun part. We're going to do a drawing uh, for a free I online e-seminar, and that will include the learning system materials for that part that you decide to sign up for. So I'm going to ask Marie to please announce the name of the random winner. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I'm looking at the attendee list. I am scrolling down with my eyes closed, and I'm going to point with my mouth, and let's see who I come up with. And the name is Kelly Kwong. So, Kelly Kwong, you are the winner of today's prize. Well, great. Congratulations, Kelly. We will reach out to you directly, and you'll be able to choose part one, two, or three online e-seminar um, for the dates that work for you. So you'll be hearing from us soon. Um, we're just coming up to the end of the hour. And so we don't, I've been answering some questions in the background, but if we did not get to your question, we will be downloading all of them and you will hear a response back from us. Just give us a few days, please. Also, if you would like a recording of this webinar or to obtain the slides, we will post recording the slides at this website learncicom backslash webinar dash archive. So that will be posted in a few days and you can download that and um, re-listen to the recording if you wish. But otherwise, we would like to thank you so much for attending today. We appreciate your time and we hope you have a very nice day. Thank you so much, Kelly and Vicki and Jonathan. We appreciate your presentation today. Folks, as we're at the end of our presentation, so we're going to end the broadcast. We wish everyone a great day. Stay safe. And if you're taking the exam, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.